All right, ladies and gentlemen, Benjamin here. I wanted to show you the Cyclone PCB factory that I recently built. Still needs a little bit of work done to it for uh, my specific applications, what I'm going to do with it. But I just wanted to get an overview of how I built it, uh, how it works, and uh, some of the things I noticed, just, uh, just kind of particular to its operation. But the first thing is, is that all the parts here were printed off using a 3D printer. Uh, for specifics on that, uh, you can ask me, but I'll tell you that uh, I made what's called the infill density a minimum of 50% just because uh, I know that I'm pretty rough with things. But here's some close-ups of how I put it together. You'll see that on the Y carriage that I put a little bit of uh, just regular grease out of a grease gun on the gears to keep them quiet. And... Um, and that, uh, that also seems to work good. Not only that, I also put that grease on a threaded rod. And normally you don't have to do that, but uh, considering there's going to be plastic and who knows what, what else flying around. Uh, and it also quiets it down too. Uh, there's, a, the, there's the uh, limit switches. Those uh, you, can, you can buy. I uh, stole those out of some laser printers. And the milling platform itself is just uh, salvaged plexiglass from, uh, from a previous uh, project that uh, was abandoned, I guess. But anyway, um, that, this particular one measures 9 inches by about 5 and a half. And then the base is um, it's about a 12 by 12 base. And what's cool is that I can take this with me. This thing is sturdy enough that it is portable where you can take it with you. Uh, you know, obviously you can't throw it around or anything like that. Uh, some of the basic tools that I used, um, this thing right here, this little cobalt miniature tool was awesome. Uh, all the bits you need to come with it. It's neat because you can just switch around. So instead of having a bunch of screwdrivers floating around, you just use that. This one comes with a perfect Allen wrench size and then it's got your fill up size. Now, you can see that I used uh, a variation between regular Phillips head and Allen wrench. I just used what I had, and that's uh, that's all you do. And yeah, this is a a home built machine, but it, it yields professional results. It's it's absolutely amazing. You know, I'm still learning how to do that. So anytime, uh, uh, unless you've had previous experience with CNC machines, I'm I'm new to this. Uh, but any any time you do that, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but it works, and it uh, works pretty well. What I'm using is a Dremel tool, will be the spindle. Uh, that'll probably change, um, just so, because that one's loud and noisy, and this one's about to die anyway, because I use it a lot. And for the electronics, I just used um, the uh, Ramps 1.4 with the Arduino Omega uh, 2560, just the exact same one that I use on a 3D printer. Uh, the, the, the stepper motors I purchased from Automation Technology Inc. and they actually seem to be um, a little better than the traditional uh, NMEA 17 stepper motors. They're the same size, they fit in the same holes. These ones have more holding torque, which uh, that's probably necessary for the, uh, for the CNC machine. Um, how I built it was I mounted the platform template to the plexiglass and then I just started putting the parts on um, just one by one just literally working my uh, way up from the bottom to the top uh, I started on this side you'll see where I just I, just, I literally just put it on there and started mounting then I mounted the one part and then uh, and then the next thing I did was I put the threaded rods on put on the other part lined it up and then once I did that that's pretty much what um, what kind of set it up but once these you got to make sure these these two uh, X carriage, or I'm sorry, uh, Y carriage smooth rods are perfectly lined up. And then once you do that, then you can easily line up the center. Um, now, the thing that got me the most was how this was done. I did not find any pictures anywhere, so I had to do a lot of guesswork. But you'll see how the spindle, you'll see how the, the Z carriage stepper motor is mounted. There's a bearing that is there. And there should be a washer between the bearing and the first bolt or first nut but there isn't um, not yet anyway I'll eventually put it there and you may have the same experience as I did I'm not sure but 
right here is where the, the, the actual uh, bolt or the nut is supposed to be. That didn't work out. Um, it was just too tight and didn't work, so it went down here, and I've had absolutely no issues. And what's neat is just given the nature of this thing, if for some reason you need to have an emergency and stop the machine before you can hit the button or whatever, all you gotta do is just pull it out. Yeah, see, just pull it up and you can get it to stop doing it just in case it bounces around or do whatever you need to do. Something else I also did was, because the plexiglass is an excellent, um, you know, it's a stiff material, so any noise that's generated through the milling work or through the, through the uh, stepper motors, the, uh, the bolts on the bottom here transmit all that noise to your table, to your bench. So I put on some rubber feet that uh, I bought from a now defunct Radio Shack many years ago, but they work absolutely wonderful.